Hi, welcome to this first video in a short series about tethering with the Fujifilm X-T2 camera. My name is Ivan and I'm a full-time photographer and I'm also a, an official Fujifilm X photographer, a brand ambassador. And today I'm gonna try to show you a little bit more about tethering with a Fujifilm camera. Tethering is when you have your camera connected to a computer and the point of that is, you know, getting the image that you take popping up on the computer screen as you take them. So you can have a greater level of control, you can check everything you need to check with the image in a far better way than just on the uh, camera screen. And you can also have a team present like the, the client or the, uh, the hair and makeup artist or stylist or or talent or whoever uh, also keep track of what's going on in the shoot. They see the images immediately when you shoot them and you don't, don't have to show them the camera all the time. To shoot tethered you need some more equipment than just your camera of course. You need a computer and today we're going to use the Microsoft Surface Pro 4. Uh, I know this is not a new device, it's been out for a while but for me it's new. I discovered it, uh, discovered it a couple of weeks ago and it's blown me away. It's as simple as that. I've been shooting tethered since 2005 and uh, with, with Hasselblad back then and I've constantly having to drag along rather big and heavy laptops. They're, they gradually become lighter uh, as the years go by but this this is like you know keeping a tablet with you. You can disconnect the uh, the um, keyboard from the from the screen, so you can shoot just into the screen if you want to do that, and that's kind of like I like I like to work, how I like to work. Uh, okay, so you have some hardware, and you also need some software. Today we're going to use Lightroom. In the next video in this series, I'm going to show you how to use Capture One. I know that's not possible, but we can get it to work anyway. <laughs> okay, more about that in the next video, just a teaser. Uh, you also need, if you're going to shoot with Lightroom, you need the plugin that's been released by Fujifilm and Adobe. A great plugin that lets you control basically everything on your camera. You can get two versions of the plugin, a pro version, and I, I won't even mention the other one because this kind of it costs around, you know, like $70, $80 or something, but it's a cheap investment. People use more money on, on presets or stuff. Buy the plugin instead and buy the pro plugin, please. Instead of buying the cheap plugin and then you kind of, after six months, find out, eh, I'm going to use the pro plugin, so I have to buy it again. Buy the pro plugin. But first, be before the camera and Lightroom and everything can, can talk to each other, you need to go into the uh, setup of your camera. Press the menu button, then you go down here to the wrench, like this, and you go down to what's called connection setting, and to PC shoot mode. That's turned off by default. Uh, I think you have to have firmware 1.10 at least to do this. And you go into this mode and you select USB Auto. Now the camera and the, the Surface Pro is ready to talk to each other. So now I can take my USB cable. It's a Tether Tools, tether tools cable. Nice, solid, sturdy cable with an angled connector. Great, because then the cable doesn't, you know, stick straight out of the camera. It goes downwards. Much easier when you're shooting. The Surface Pro said to, to let me know that, okay, now we're ready to rock and roll. Now you can go into File menu in Lightroom and you can go to Tethered Capture and start Tethered Capture. Here you can give it uh, the name you want. Let's call it LR Tether Test. And we can select what's the start number of the sequence. I'm going to put that to 1. I can also select which folder I want my images to go to. I've already done that uh, prior to this. And I'm going to click OK. I can also add some metadata here and keywords and stuff if I want to. So that will be applied to all images. I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to press OK. 
And as you can see now, we got this bar here saying that the Fujifilm X-T2 camera is connected. I can see the shutter speed is 250. If I turn the dial on the camera, it changes 60, 125, 250. Same with the aperture, 16, 14, 13, 11. I'll put it back at 16. I've set my white balance and my ISO uh, white balance to match the studio strobes I'm using uh, and the develop settings. I can put, if I, if I set this one to same as previous, uh, I can tweak one image, I can adjust white balance and all the stuff you can do in Lightroom and the next image coming over will have those same uh, settings. Very handy if you want to give your images kind of a slightly better look or a different look while shooting, you can do that. So, if I take a picture now, like this, you'll see that the image comes up on my screen, like this. Okay, that's cool. We're shooting tethered. Nice function. I can also, if I um, uh, if I want to take the images uh, from uh, Lightroom, I can press this button here. I can press that one and I get another picture. And I think it's time to start our beautiful model of the day, the Brio train, you know. It's just to keep something moving in the background so we can uh, have, uh, have something moving so it doesn't show, okay, you couldn't see any difference between those two pictures. But if I shoot another one now, you'll see that, okay, that image pops up on screen. Fine, that's the easy way, just connect and shoot. Luckily, Fujifilm has also uh, included lots of other features in the plugin app. If you go down into the control center here, you'll see that you have an icon marked X. X marks the spot. On Mac, you'll have the X icon up here somewhere, but on a, on a PC, you have it down here in your control center. And if I click it, I have two choices. I can either show the plugin control panel or I can open the preferences. Let's start by opening the preferences because here is some good stuff. As you can see here, I can decide what file format do I want transferred to the computer and what file format do I want to stay on the memory card. And I can choose to have like this, I can have both JPEG and RAW coming over to the computer and I can have both stay on the uh, memory card. I can have only the, if I do like this, I can only have the JPEGs on the memory card. Uh, full flexibility. I'd like to have both on the memory card and I want to have only the RAW files coming over. I can also control something with uh, automated shooting here. It's uh, I haven't tested it, but it seems like the plugin can, you know, only save the files in a folder without sending them to Lightroom. It would be great if that app could be a standalone app so you didn't have to use Lightroom at all. More about that in the next video. And you have a couple of other options here. I'm not, not going to go as much into it. You can select the Instagram type and and uh, things like that. But instead, if you go to the, sorry, if you go to the Tether plugin control panel, here you have Fujifilm's control panel. Like now, it selected the camera. That means I can shoot from the camera, with the camera, and I don't get any live preview here. If I shoot an image, I get the image popping up here. And as you can see, it's much faster here than inside Lightroom. Lightroom handles X-Trans files slow, if you ask me. I don't know why, because this one does it, you know, if you can see that, it pop, pops up very quickly. Uh, and if I want to use the computer for shooting, I can select PC here, and I can now press live up here. And now you can see I have a live preview of what's going on here. Now I can't shoot with the camera. No use, I can press with, uh, how many times I want to. Now I have to use this one for uh, taking the image. But the good thing here is that you have a lot of tools down here. You have an assist tool, where you can, sorry, oh, let's open it there. You have an assist tool where you can uh, place an overlay on your image, where you can have uh, the layout of a page or a cover. You can have, uh, so you, you know where design elements are gonna be compared uh, in addition to your image. So your image will be overlaid with the, with the kind of 
uh, whatever image you choose to use as an overlay. Nice thing. I often use that when shooting for magazines and stuff. You have automated shooting. Um, here you can uh, do exposure bracketing, you can do focus bracketing, you can do interval timer shooting. Great if you do studio work and still life work and stuff like that. Lots of options as you can see. Sorry. So it's a little bit hard standing at an angle to the, to the screen here. You have image, sorry, image quality settings. Here you can also choose which uh, film simulation you want to use. Image quality like I have selected fine and raw the image size. and do the shadow tone and highlight tone and color and sharpness and everything just all those so you can do pretty much a lot of stuff inside this app you can also here change let's say i'm okay i'm not going to shoot at 250 i'm going to be shooting at uh, 125 i can do that now well, i said i pressed 100 now it changes everything and controls the camera i can i can change the white balance i can change the the, the um, aperture I'm going to put it back to uh, to uh, 250 as we had like this. And if I now go back to camera, I've left the control to the camera again. You can see the, the live view disappeared and I'm now controlling the stuff from the camera again. Okay, that was the Fujifilm Tether plugin. Great plugin, uh, gives you tons of control as you uh, probably saw. And you have lots of options for tweaking and doing stuff just the way you want to, whether you're shooting from the camera or controlling the camera from the computer. But one of the most important features for me when I'm shooting tethered is the option to uh, rate images. I often shoot shorter series like 15 to 20 images and I bring the talent over to the computer and we go through them and we look at, okay, are there any keepers here and stuff? And to shoot something like 15 to 20 images with people that often are in a hurry, uh, it means you have to have a software solution that can transfer those images uh, quite quickly to the to the to the screen, so you can uh, so you can actually look at them. I have my uh, I have my stopwatch here, and we're going to try a sequence here of 20 images just to see how quickly does Lightroom get them over to the screen. Uh, and I'm going to start uh, by shooting, I'm going to count to 20 and on the last image I'm going to stop the, uh, the timer here. So, let's go. Ready, steady, go. I'm going to shoot approximately one image every second and that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 with my hand in there so we can see the last image coming up on screen. Because the people I shoot, uh, they, they, they don't have much time. Often they want to, you know, get out of there almost be, before we've started shooting. So I need these images to be transferred to the computer quickly. And as you can see now, uh, we are closing in on one minute and I've already shot my series of, 50, oh, of 20 images and the talent is standing by the computer uh, and we still haven't got all the images coming uh, come over here. So we'll have, just have to wait and see if there's a hand showing up on my screen somewhere in time here. Oh, let's see, that's one minute ten, still no hand, still no hand. Uh, and for me, this is moving a little bit too slow. I would have liked this to have been over already, so I could have started the process of going through them with my client. And as you can see now, we're pushing 130. Still not all. Still not all. No hand, no hand, no hand. Let's see. I think we're kind of closing in here now. 140. And there's the hand about 1 minute 40 seconds, okay? It doesn't sound like much time, but when everyone is in a hurry, 1 minute and 40 is actually a pretty long time before you can start looking at them. Okay, so that's perhaps the biggest uh, negative, the biggest uh, issue for me about using Lightroom for tethering. And another issue with Lightroom for tethering, um, 
we haven't had any occurrences here now, but sometimes Lightroom crash. I think Lightroom is it's, it's kind of a heavy program, it has tons of functions and sometimes it's, it just crashes on, it crashes on you. And uh, luckily it has gotten better over the years, but sadly um, when things crash uh, they're not always that easy to get going again. I want a solution that I can just, you know, turn my camera on and off or replug or restart Lightroom. I've had times in a studio when you're shooting a whole day that uh, perhaps Lightroom crashes two, three, four times in that day. And I've had times when I had to reboot everything, disconnect everything, get it up and running again. And when you start the tethering process, you're kind of like back to square one. You have to set the, the uh, counter, you have to select the name of the session, you have to do everything because it, you know, some crashes are real serious crashes and it kind of like forgets that you you had any tethering going on so that's also a negative part with the, with Lightroom it's not as stable as I would have wanted to and it's not the fastest solution that I, I'd prefer let's shoot one more of that beautiful train uh, and as you can see here now we got an image without my hand. But the, the good part now is that we can go through images with the client and we can have a look at them and we can zoom into them and we can see the details and everything. And uh, we can study, uh, as you can see, Lightroom. Loading, 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 loading. And ready. Some might say that, okay, the Surface Pro isn't fast enough. I've used Lightroom on blistering fast machines. Uh, and it's, it is a heavy program. It is a heavy program. Uh, in the next video, this is gonna we're gonna round up here now. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about Capture One, as I promised you, and see how that compares speedwise and with the functionality to Lightroom when shooting tethered, the impossible way, the hack way. Okay. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you or I. The important part isn't if you enjoyed it, the, the important part is if you learned anything and I hope you learned something, I hope you took something back with you that says okay I know a little bit more about tethering, I'm going to use it, I'm going to try it out with my Fujifilm. And if you liked it and found it useful, please comment or press the like, thumbs up or down or whatever you feel like. And if there's something you're wondering, some questions, why didn't he cover that, leave them in the comment field and maybe I'll do another follow up video. Capture One will be next and hopefully the third one I'll take you out on a, on a proper shoot where we have something more interesting than the, the Brio modeling train. So with that uh, amazing Brio, Brio train passing by in the background, I'll leave you and I say thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.